Hello, I'm Apex Toy Cat, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today, I figured I would give you a really useful guide to the early game of Minecraft. This is something a lot of you might already know, but let's be honest, when you first get the game, there's no tutorial, there's no easy way to work out what you've got to do, and so even something as simple as chopping wood can be really hard, and this is a problem because you need to do it for basically everything else in Minecraft. And so today, I figured, as an expert, I would guide you on precisely how to chop down wood. And so, with that said, let's keep in mind the first step for chopping down wood is actually to find it first and that means going and finding any biome which has trees inside of it. Thankfully I spawned next to one but if you don't you could find a snowy biome with some tiger trees, you could find a cherry grove biome, you could find a jungle, you've got lots of different choices but as long as you find trees you can probably find wood. Now with that in mind you've got the wood found, now all you've got to do is chop it down. This seems like it would be a really tricky task, you might uh, freak out about this but ultimately all you've got to do is chop down the wood and so this involves using the chop wood button which is very widely known about you just have to press it and then once once you press the chop wood button um, you can chop down the wood very easily. And this is something that I recommend doing uh, a few times, honestly. Uh, do a few practice runs, make sure you know what you're doing, and then maybe chop a lot of wood. Maybe chop a whole tree's worth of wood. That is something I think I'm going to do today. Um, I, I, I would say that you could chop different types of wood too. Maybe you're intimidated by the one type of wood and the, the chop wood button just doesn't work there. If so, find a different type of wood, one that looks like a cat, and you might find that it works better Yep, this is, um, I, you've got to use the chop wood button, which obviously we all know precisely how to do. But for those of you who are unfamiliar, the way that you chop wood in Minecraft is fairly simple. Um, you just have to, uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's quite simple, but to, uh, sim simplify this for you, uh, even further, position yourself with your legs far apart. Okay, that's, that's an easy thing to miss. Raise the axe up behind your head and over the shoulder. Also easy to miss. Keep your arms extended. Ah, uh, you've got to be as a minimum distance away. And then when you swing the axe, hand use the, the hand the nearest the head of the axe should slide down the handle shaft and also bend your knees slightly. So this is a, this is a very uh, easy set of things to miss. But just in case uh, you did already. Basically, what you want to do is you want to go down here now. And you want to you, you wanna bend your knees a little bit. So just like this. And then you want to make sure you've got a, a distance from the tree. You don't want to go too far from the tree. If you go too far from the tree, you won't be able to chop it down. But you also don't want to be too close to the tree. So make sure that you do both of those things just right. And now you're ready to chop your wood. And it's it's not happened for me yet though. So um, I think that at this point, we should say uh, that before chopping wood, you might want to have... Uh, some armor. I think uh, when it comes to chopping down wood, it can be really, really easy to think that, yeah, it's harmless, it's a easy beginning of the game, but I really would recommend that if you can, uh, get yourself some armor. There is leather found all around the overworld. You can even kill horses to get leather. It's a uh, little known fact, but if you use this leather nice and simply together, you can get some armor, which will protect you from any splinters or anything like that. Again, uh, you've got to make sure you're sliding your hand down, and if you're going to be sliding your hand down on an axe, you're going to want to have some armor. So kill at least a couple of horses or cows. Make sure you've got enough to make some, you know, some decent armor to protect yourself from this. It's a really, really crucial step if you're going to do any wood chopping. Chopping wood seems very harmless and people do it with reckless abandon, but I know it's like what it's like when you're starting Minecraft. You're terrified, you're nervous, you don't really want to go through that, do you? You don't, you don't want to go through the pain, so instead what you're going to do is you're going to just find yourself some cows. They're found in basically the same areas and you're going to want to get yourself some armor. There's obviously um, a question Question, which might be arising in your head right now, which is, uh, what if I don't want to beat animals to death? Well, you can still get armor without killing animals. It's just a little bit harder that way. I would say uh, that if you don't want to punch a chicken, not everyone does, honestly, but if you don't want to punch a chicken, uh, then you could go and find some leather in the real world. Uh, there are some villages you can steal from, but at that point, you'd be stealing from a person, which might be worse than killing an animal. I mean, there's a there's a big debate perhaps in there about the, the ethics of which one comes first, but ultimately, you get to decide it is 
a uh, freeform game where you are in charge, but I have just found my second leather-bound animal. And after I do this, I'll have enough leather, hopefully, to build myself, uh, you know, some form of leather armor. There we go. We can now make the leather gloves. Oh, you know, maybe, maybe we can't make those. Maybe that's not a real thing. I think we're gonna need at least, if we want some, like, leggings to protect my legs, we're gonna need at least seven uh, leather. So this is now enough for some boots. But I, I, I think boots aren't gonna be enough for me alone. I think if you're gonna want to be protected fully, you're gonna want to make sure you've got something more. So now with six leather, I can craft myself a helmet, maybe even, and I think we could go ahead and do that. But if you want to craft it, you're going to need a crafting table. And that, I believe the recipe is four planks. So we seem to have gotten ourselves into a bit of a conundrum here, actually. Uh, but it's not one that, so as, as your Minecraft expert today, I want to point out that it's not an unbeatable conundrum because instead all you've got to do is go and find a crafting table without chopping down wood. You know, people think that you need to start a game this way, but actually that's the silly thing. It's not, um, you know, the, the silly thing would not be not getting it, but instead the silly thing would be thinking that you need to chop wood on your first day. It's actually kind of a late game activity for most people. You kind of build your way up into it uh, because obviously before you can chop down a tree, the, the, the thing that's been going wrong every time we get to one of these is uh, you don't have an axe. If you're gonna chop down a tree, you need an axe. It was right, it was right in the Google search. Uh, although actually, wait, just to, just to confirm I wasn't, uh, cause right here, I realized this might be about, uh, not, not about Minecraft. So in Minecraft, you need to find the tree. Okay, we did that. You need to target the tree. Okay, I, I did that. And then you wanna chop the tree. So, as you can see, they don't recommend getting gloves first, but the problem with doing it this way, uh, the, the very silly problem with doing it this way, in my opinion, is the fact that when you, when you go to do that, um, it, it doesn't, it doesn't always work. I'm trying to chop the tree, I, but I just, I, I'm eating meat instead. The game is telling me I'm hungry, and honestly, you should listen to your body. If your body says you're hungry, um, then that means that you can't chop down wood. You, if you're if you're hungry, your wood chopping is just not going to work correctly. And so it's important to focus on that first. You might also find there's some value in focusing on getting a bed first. Uh, you can get a bed by obviously uh, getting some wool together, and then you just combine it with some wood. And so if we sleep first, we'll be able to chop down some trees tomorrow. I think I think that's what it is. I think being well rested is an important part of any Minecraft world. And so before we can get an axe, before we can chop down the wood, um, cause it just, it just, it, it just isn't working. I'm telling you right now. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to work that out. So it's a little late, it's a little spooky, but here's a valuable lesson for your first day in Minecraft. Did you know that if you ever have someone chasing you for anything, whether it's uh, you know, like a zombie for your life, or whether it's a creditor for your unpaid debts, you actually can just keep running away. People like to tell you that you can't run away because it is a little bit of effort for you, and if you keep running away from your problems, it becomes everyone else's problem, but you actually can, it's, it's a little known fact, you can just run away from all of your problems all of the time, forever, and absolutely no one can stop you. There's uh, there's there's no rules on this, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, like you, you can't be forced to do things against your will because as not a chicken, you get to decide uh, what is important to you. And so with that said, we've now uh, got ourselves uh, astray and we've got some ice. We, I, I think going into a new biome is always a good idea too. If you, if you find yourself getting stuck on something, Try something a little bit new. It might it might help you out in a very big way. With that said, I'm now uh, at least have a place to sleep for the night, and I've just proven the point that you really don't need uh, to uh, chop down a tree if you want to do your basics. In fact, I think right here I've proven uh, that actually we could cook some food up. I mean, we don't have any anything to cook it with, but we could cook some food up if we wanted to. We can make those safety, uh, you know, that safety hat. That that might be valuable. If I make one of these, I'll be able to. Yeah, look at me. I, I think I'm safe from splinters now, which means the only thing I'm missing, ultimately, is I, I'm just missing the ability to, uh, you know, if we're being frank, the only thing I miss for a tree is, a, is, a, is a, an axe, right? Because you, you obviously need an axe to chop down a tree. I mean, if you've been playing Minecraft for more than five minutes, you'd know that one. And if you've only made it to this point in the video before realizing, then this was a test. Got you good. Can't believe that you're watching a tutorial and you expect to be taught from scratch, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you anyway how to get an axe. So an axe, um, there is a crafting recipe for one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there is a there's a way you make an axe actually. Uh, it's very simple. You just want to combine together 
the axe ingredients with the the axe handle. The axe head and the axe handle is how you make an axe. And um, obviously, I don't have either of those things right now. But if you want to see where you'd find them, you just go into this little bar and you type in axe. And you'll see that a, you know, a stone axe is really easy to get. You just need three pieces of stone and then some sticks. Sticks are very easy to obtain. Um, and so as a result, we just need to chop down some wood first. So actually, okay, so, um, you know, this is, this is an important learning lesson too. If you ever find yourself where you can't craft an ingredient because you need the ingredient to do it, just bear in mind that almost everything in Minecraft drops. And so clearly, uh, there are those axe building villages, right? You've got to go find those guys first. If you find... If you find a guy with an axe, you've got to kill the guy with the axe. And then if you do that, you can take his axe, and then you can chop down a tree. I, I believe that is how the beginning of the game works. Honestly, this, this is why getting into Minecraft is so hard. There's no tutorials for any of this. People expect you to chop down wood, but they don't realize just how much is involved with actually doing so. So, we're going to go find a woodland mansion now. Um, yeah, we're going to go find a woodland mansion at this point, because we need... Uh, an axe, and the only place you can get them is from a pillager, of course. And so, uh, if you want to find a woodland mansion in your world, um, it's kind of like finding a forest, except about a hundred times rarer. So, just anywhere you find a forest, um, just, just keep looking in those places, and then keep going, and eventually, statistically, you will find one. Like, it's a, it's a mathematical certainty that no matter how rare something is, with enough time, you'll get it. And so, in the same way that I am technically... Uh, you know, a Minecraft YouTuber and able to, you know, be do tutorials in that same way You'll find that you're very very able to find a woodland mansion if you just believe in yourself So um, the good news is we've got a shovel sorted right here if, if there was an axe in here it would have really saved me some pain uh, But we got some we got a fire charge too. So we're, we're doing just wonderfully if you want to if you ever want to uh, get some food to help you out with your journeys. Um, obviously, it's one of the earliest game sources of food is to chop down a wood to get some apples. But if you don't spawn near a woodland mansion and can't immediately get the axe you need for a tree, um, that can be really challenging to me. And so instead, what I recommend is uh, you, you need food, just go find a ruin portal. There's, they're all over the overworld. They're here to teach you about how Minecraft works. And it's, it's been doing a good job, just like this video, I hope you'll find. Um, because honestly, it is very, very, very simple, uh, like like any task in life, to start the process. I think uh, in, in, in the same way that many people would argue uh, that you really just need to get something moving and then the rest will come later. I think the same is true in a Minecraft world. You will often believe uh, that the only way... Uh, the, the only way forwards in Minecraft can be to, you know, like, to look something up. But actually, sometimes the answer is inside of you. Sometimes the answer to the problems that you're looking for are really in you all along. And so maybe, actually, it's not going to a woodland mansion I need. Maybe instead it's something I'm just kidding. I, I, I think a pillager outpost might be my actual best bet. So we're going to find one of those. And if we find one of those, we can just kill the guy using a shovel. This is uh, it's an enchanted shovel, so it's going to be really good. And then we'll be able to chop down our tree. But yeah, I think, uh, I, I th I think when it comes to teaching, a lot of people don't realize um, that teaching a skill and being good at a skill are very different things. Um, it's, it's really weird because, you know, being an effective communicator should be an important part of every job because we are humans. We are a species uh, that have thrived on communication from the very earliest of days to now. But at the same time, I, I, I feel as though communication effectively is a hard thing because you need to communicate in a way that people are receptive to. I think that people uh, do, you know, like a, a lot of people make fun of the fact that uh, in our current generation, we need to look up a tutorial to do anything. You can't just work out by yourself how to rewire a plug socket or how to, you know, hook up a gas connection to your stove or something. Um, you know, people, people will say that makes us a, a weak generation. People will say uh, that really, it's ridiculous that everything has to be taught to you via video. But at the same time, that is the way you are most receptive to learning. Everyone has a method like that. For my generation, it might be looking things up on the internet and seeing a quick three word summary. And by the way, has to be mentioned, um, I have no idea. After, after looking this up, 
This is, uh, seeing this in three points is simple, but how does this person do the whole video in two minutes and 41 seconds? It's, it seems impossible that there could be a five minute 45 tutorial here. Um, but apparently, uh, you know, these people are really, really good at their craft. But I, you know, like, I bet they're not as good at communicating if it took them that long. And so my goal is to make sure that you know the full process start to finish. By the end of this, you should be fully aware of what to do. But also, yeah, I think it's a, a very reasonable thing to say that everyone receives communication differently. Um, the idea of, uh, you know, like, uh, learning styles has been debunked many a time. It's not that everyone is good at one type of learning all of the time, but instead that we learn different things in different ways. That is a truth that we all have, and I think that in, in the same way that right now, you might really need to learn how to chop wood, and you're hopefully, you get in there in the same way, uh, you might learn better by watching. Also, look at that, we got, we got enough to make some more armor now. I'm gonna be so safe from these splinters. I'm gonna be so ready to chop down this wood. But in the same way that that is true, you might also argue um, that really learning is not a, uh, a universal experience. And it's kind of about trying to tell people what's inside their own head already, uh, but trying to, you know, make them... Because, uh, you know, people are much more receptive to ideas they already believe. It's one of the big problems and bias that we have in the world. And so how do you convince someone they already know about some, you know, like, it's easy with, uh, you know, political ideas. Like, well, the only reason those other YouTubers can do it so quick is because they're lazy and they, or maybe they can do it so quickly because they are, uh, they are the 1% and they are really holding us all back. They've got the money to, to hire private suitors and that's the reason they're chopping wood so much better than me. You know, we can, I can use political ideas against you, uh, maybe, and in some places that might really work. But in some places, it's much harder to... Uh, get someone to the level where they believe they know something. If you are at the point where you don't, oh, okay, that's, see, that's, that's, there might be an ax in there. If we, we might, we might have this one. So, uh, if you ever get to the point where you feel like you don't know, you, you, you won't ever learn something, you'll actually hold yourself back. Because if you don't think you can learn it, then it's very hard for someone else to teach you because the whole time you're gonna be doubting yourself. There's no point trying to learn skills that you physically are unable to. For example, I am unable, no matter how hard I try, to make myself uh, grow 12 inches taller. I, I, could, I could watch as many tutorials as I like, I could, could, could buy all the cream in the world, but I know it won't happen, so there's no point in me trying to learn. But I might do a good job in learning effective communication. I might do a good job of learning how, how, how a horse works. You know, you ever look at, they got like four legs and they go real fast. Why do horses go so much faster than people? What do, what do they have that we don't, you know? I, I could learn that, I bet. Uh, right, right, right now I'd have to guess it's something about leg span, but I actually don't even know that much. I really do not. So, okay, we're here now finally. The moment has come. Am I gonna find an axe? This is, so this is one of the best places to find axes in Minecraft. First things first, this is a blacksmith chest. Uh, so this is the blacksmith, it's a building. Uh, a blacksmith is not be confused with a blacksmith the person. A blacksmith works at the blacksmith where he blacksmiths, or rather smiths, uh, to make all sorts of weapons. That's why they have this grinder right out front. Very, very, very handy uh, update, part 1.14. But, um, so if we find the blacksmith, uh, he, he has to be around this village somewhere, if there's unemployed villagers. If we found the blacksmith, then we'd be able to trade for things. Um, however, you know, trading might be a big early game step. Also, maybe, maybe he's not here. Maybe the blacksmith has gone to sleep early. Um, but one of the great things about the blacksmith is he's always smithing things. And so he just stores some random stuff in his chest. And so if you can just find that chest, uh, you'll be in for a treat. And so is this a blacksmith? None of these villagers have jobs. You know, I... I just, just like, uh, something, something, those Minecraft YouTubers who think that they can get halfway through a tutorial and stop, uh, these guys don't even know what they're doing. So, well, none of the villagers here have jobs, so instead I'm just gonna go to sleep, and in the morning, we're gonna check out this blacksmith chest. See you in part two for that! No, I'm just kidding, this is, this is staying, you get, you gotta watch the whole thing here today. So this is a blacksmith, and inside the blacksmith is a blacksmith chest. So, the blacksmith chest contains lots of valuable things, and in our case, it does not contain an axe. It does contain a saddle, and it contains some apples. So the way you take things out of chests, this is a skill I'm very familiar with, is you double tap them. If you double tap an item uh, with A button, if you're on a controller, 
uh, like myself, or you can click it if you're on a mouse, or you can do whatever the heck happens on a, on a touch screen because it looks way different, and you'll actually combine all of the items of one type into a stack. You can't do this with stackable items. If you do, it just automatically moves from inventory to somewhere else, but you can do it with any actually stackable item, and so now I've got bread and I've got apples, and I've got two chest plates. And then I can put my white wool away and my seeds because I don't think I'll need those. And just like that, I'm now slightly better prepared to get my my, my axe. I think uh, it is gonna be a scary situation. I mean, if you look at the shovel, it only does one attack damage. It's the same as, you know, literally, uh, you know, it's the same as fighting something with my fist. And so if I do find a pillager outpost or will mansion, it's gonna be a bit of a adventure really to make it happen. But it will be a bit easier now that I've got a saddle. So here's an important part of the chopping wood process. A lot of people forget about this. A lot of people leave this by the wayside because they think you don't need to be informed. But if you want to tame, um, if, if you want to, you know, chop down some wood and you want to get the axe for doing so, getting across the world can be a lot faster with a horse. So I, I recommend if you find a saddle, tame one of these guys, and now you don't use any of your hunger getting around the world. And if you're lucky, they'll jump real high too. If you're unlucky, you get a horse like this, which makes you question your sanity, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, horses can always be burned, and also you can, uh, no axe here either, but a golden apple and some boots, those will do me nicely, and we can use that technique we learned earlier, it doesn't just apply to apples and breads, it also applies to obsidian, and now we've got some obsidian, which we can use to help us kill the enemies to get the wood. And I've also got a hoe in here, which is very, very lovely. And so I'm starting to build up a set of tools. This is, um, a lot of people in the early game of Minecraft, they think it's useful to make a lot of tools. And so hopefully you're seeing that these tools are, you know, almost as good as the ones that those people are making at the start of their game. Again, I know that we're always watching speed runs where people are chopping down wood in 10 seconds, but it's not actually like that for the average player. Not everyone knows exactly how to do this. And so once you've got your tr uh, you, once you've got your tree jumper, once you've got your uh, horse, you can now make your way over to any structure you want to. And as long as you don't get him in too deep water, like I've done right here, you can even cross rivers with him. It's very, very easy. So um, I think a pillager outpost is more realistic at this point. I was hoping for a woodland mansion, but I've been going for a very long time and not finding one. And so... If you ever find yourself, uh, you're trying to chop down wood and getting demotivated, thinking you should give up, just remember that a really healthy part of success is thinking that you can do it. One of the biggest biases we have in this world, one of the biggest problems you might even say, um, is that we we have a big, uh, you know, the, it, it, maybe you could say in, in nepotism and the fact that if you're born wealthy, you're more likely to be wealthy and stuff like that. One of the biggest things that leads to this is just the confidence effect. If you believe you can do something, you will apply for roles. You will, uh, you know, you will do all the tasks that make that possible. And uh, although there is a mild element of nepotism built in there, a big part of you know wealth correlating to success is just having you know, parents that believe that you can do well. And in that same way, if you don't have parents that you believe you can do well, if you have parents that would look at a, a Minecraft video this long and say, you should not watch that tutorial, um, I want to say they're wrong. I want to say you can do it. I want to say if you find yourself uh, in a situation uh, where just like me, you're effectively orphaned uh, in your adult life, I want to say uh, that actually, no, you, you got this. You have to be your own motivating voice, which is harder but you can, you can overcome that and do better. And, um, you know, that, that means uh, having a lot of your own... Oh, there's some emeralds. That's useful. I could trade this with the village, and I might... If, if, if the villagers were working, you could get an axe that way too. It's a niche side option. We're going to try and say focus the path. You're already confused. You're already lost. How do you get yourself uh, an axe? You just want to, you want to stay focused on this path. We, everything I've done so far has been perfectly repeatable, by the way. You should be able to do this, no problem on your worlds. Uh, as long as as long as you've got yourself uh, all of these chests we've found, everything will go great for you. But yeah, there's uh, uh, once you get to a certain point, you you might need to realize that yeah, there's someone in your life that has to have knowledge. And isn't it better for a random stranger on the internet who's passionate about teaching to be the person that tells you about how to tie a tie or how to communicate or how to chop wood? Isn't it better that someone who wants to share those things with you is the person doing it? Rather than someone who is like, oh, yeah, well, I did I did give birth about, you know, 15, 30 years ago. 
I guess, I guess therefore that makes it my problem. In a, in a way, if you think about it, actually, no, this is, this is the much more logical way. This is the way everyone should want it. And uh, speaking of ways that things should want to go, um, if you ever want to get a saddleback from a horse, here's a fun fact. You don't even have to murder the horse. Just take it and get off. The horse will not get me any further because I need to go up the top of that mountain because from there, uh, you, you get really good views from the top of mountains. It will help you in all aspects of life, but especially when it comes to chopping down wood. I, I know at this point you're like, oh, I just, I can't, I can't keep doing this one, Toy Cat. But you can. Just be, just follow me and believe. And uh, yeah, now that we've got our, our, a few grass blocks on us. Did we get grass? We did. Uh, we can't, you can't pick block grass apparently. Yes, we can. I'm lying. So now we're going to use these grass blocks. And later, you know, we could, uh, we could do some real uh, useful stuff, I'm imagining. But for now, we're just going to keep on working our way up the mountain. It uses a lot of a shovel's durability because gold is a less effective tool. But ultimately, once you get your first, even if you get a golden axe, you can use that golden axe to help you get more axes. Uh, and so really, it, it works out just great. You, you, you'll be fine. But in the world, we should be asking for communicators uh, who are passionate about uh, teaching us, who are excited for our progress. And maybe that's actually a better thing. Having to Google things all of the time means you have the bravery to ask. Having to uh, reach the point where you say you don't know is a much braver position than pretending that you know. And uh, ultimately, you know, I uh, some would say that I've, I've been pretending I know this whole video, uh, but I would say they're lying. And you know how I know that? It's because I know. Trust me, that's not a self-fulfilling logic loop. That is a real fact. I know precisely what's happening. And so... The most important thing when it comes to finding a good view in Minecraft is having your render distance turned up. A lot of people choose to have this turned down for, you know, personal preference reasons. It, it helps your game run a bit smoother. But if you ever come up to a big high point, max out your render distance and you might have your game slow down. But it will help you know exactly where to go. And so on this world, I can look around and I can say, I don't know where I'm going to find a pillager outpost or a wooden mansion. But maybe, just maybe, if I go into my settings. So you want to go to settings, and then you want to go to video. And then you want to go to render distance. This can go up to 96 chunks if you're on a PC. Uh, it's set slightly lower on consoles and on phones. But if you max that out, you'll watch as the world renders itself in front of you. It's a bit laggy for the sake of a video. Although not actually terribly. And I can see there's a roof forest over there. So that could be a woolen pension. Or I could look this way and... Realistically, it only renders in one direction at a time. But um, yeah, if you just if you let the game do its thing, it will tell you. Oh wait, wait! It, no, that's a mountain. <laughs> if you let the game render and do its thing, it will tell you what's in a given direction. It's basically like having a spyglass, except the spyglass actually works. It's incredible. It's it's so useful. It's something I love to do when I'm starting a new world. And I'm just like, oh wow, with the mansion. Okay, to told you I would find one. I, I bet entirely wrong on that. Once you know which direction to head, really line up your cursor with it if you want to. Uh, once you've done that, all you want to do then is turn your render distance down to where you're comfortable. I think uh, even though lag is something, or you know, I guess render distance and frame uh, concerns are something that are entirely abatable. It's worth mentioning uh, that even though uh, performance decrease isn't just a decrease in your computer's performance, but it might be a decrease in your own performance too. Um, one of the... One of the things that, uh, uh, that is so important about high frame rate games is they give you more time to respond to things. If you, if you, you know, if, if you end up with uh, really slow frame times, if there's a big lag between each second, then it takes a while for that information to reach your eyes. And so that's why having high frame rates is not just a weird gaming preference thing. It's actually a performance thing. But yeah, I, I think uh, investing in yourself is very important. In the same way that if you're going to chop down a tree, um, you know, you want to have an axe. I think if you want to do something seriously, it might be worth investing in learning a thing or two about that thing that you really care about. It can seriously, seriously help. And so, yeah, I'm very excited now to know that we've got a Woodland Mansion. If we, all we have to do is work out how we're going to kill it. So, all I've got so far is I've got a shovel and a hoe. The hoe has two attack damage, so I'm good to go. Okay, so I just have to kill uh, anyone holding an axe, and then they've got a percent chance of dropping that same axe for me, to then use. But there's actually something sneaky you can do here uh, if, if internet. So uh, first things first, make it to a Willow Mansion. I always recommend if you see something like this, the, the situation we're in in this world, if you ever get yourself to this point, then I would just recommend 
uh, try not to take the most mountainous route. It's direct to go up and over, but you'll probably save more time if you take the the more uh, obtuse, you know, the, the kind of indirect way around will help you out a great deal. But yeah, um, the, 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 the truth is, at some point, you should question, why do you want to chop the wood? One of the, one of the valuable things about having people around you, one of the valuable things that might get lost if you're going on a pure information level, is that the information you seek is sometimes biased by your emotional state. And it's hard to admit that. No one wants to ever admit that, like, yes, there are some emotions that are getting in the way of my facts. Because, you know, no one wants to have feelings that are more important than them facts. But it is how we actually live. There is, there is a rational you, and there is an emotional you. And the rational you might feel like he's making all the decisions, but that's because the emotional you is letting him believe that. Or letting them believe that. Or letting her believe that. Or letting, you know, the, the point is to say uh, that I have now found my woodland mansion. But, you know, if I if I, if I I wanted to get there faster, I there are lots of methods available to me. Also, there's lots of chopped down trees around here. So, you know, someone has followed my tutorial in this world already. That's how effective it's been. But yeah, I I think the... Okay, so also I heard a zombie. That's That's fine though. Zombies are not an issue. Uh, again, if you keep running, all your problems go away. If you keep running, any problem that you don't want to deal with can be not your problem. It's uh, There's a valuable point where you learn why you should care about your problems. But I think if you always know that running is an option, you'll feel a little bit more secure that you're dealing with your problems not because you have to, but because you want to. In some way, for some reason. It might be that that reason it's... But by the way, when it gets dark, what I always recommend is find a light source. I, uh, if you don't have a light source, uh, there's this flower called the torch flower that I believe you can get. It's, uh, pretty good because it's both a flower, so it's natural, but also gives you a source of light. I mean, I haven't, I haven't used one yet, but it's in the, it's, it's in the name, so I can imagine it'd be very good at that. Uh, what I also imagine could be really good is, uh, if we can find the Woodland Mansion and if we could get inside. So, uh, uh, again, li little known thing right here, but in Minecraft... There is a structure called the Woodland Mansion, and it was added in 1.11. Uh, this structure is very good because in one, in one inside of it are lots of things. It's very, very, very rare to find, so you know you might want to spawn into one. But if you can just get your hands on a Woodland Mansion, you'll probably do pretty fine. And oh, the solution to light, you don't just need those flowers. You can instead use torches, which you'll also find here. Indeed, I think so much of the early game Minecraft can be really easily solved by just finding a woodland mansion and then getting inside the woodland mansion and then uh, chopping down whatever you find inside. Oh, not chopping down until you get there, uh, get some good people killed though. So now I'm going to use my hoe and I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to do so. I, I, I always make sure you have an, a controlled engagement. If you stand here, nothing can get you because everything has to come from inside. I'm also using full damage to my advantage, and I'm also taking advantage. I'm also making sure that because this hoe has low. Oh wait, is that is that an axe? No, it's not. So now I've got a emerald, and I'm gonna go find another uh, pillager. I'm gonna wait till he comes this way. There we go. We got one. We got two, in fact. So again, the damage is very very low, but you can take advantage. You, you can really balance it out by making sure the environment works in your favor. If the environment is working in your favor, it doesn't matter how bad your combat skills are. Um, I mean, apparently it does. Um, oh, it really matters. You know, I lied about saying it doesn't matter. So, if the environment is not in your favor, take a second, cool down, eat a golden apple maybe, and you should do just great. But yeah, once you've found one of these structures, all of the goodies inside of it can be yours. And so, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back in. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna let this creeper just just vanish. I that was an arrow that almost hit me there. I'm just gonna get out. I'm gonna admit that that is a scary place for me to be, and I'm gonna go in from an entirely different place. This is this is something that the 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 world doesn't want you knowing. But if you ever find yourself breaking into someone's home, and it doesn't go well, just break into someone else's home. There is an infinite number of homes out there, and you can break into all of them one by one until you find one that you're happy with. And so that is precisely my goal here today. I'm just going to break into people's homes until I am... Okay, so there we go. I've got to watch out for that creeper. But if I can just do that, this 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 illager does not even know that he can get me. 
My golden hoe is running out. After that dies, I am going to have to use my fist, but I'm hoping I get one of these axes before then. Fun fact, you can also get an axe by killing piglins or piglin brutes. Piglin brutes spawn with an axe, which they use to disarm your shield. But if you kill them, they will drop it. So you could use that axe as well, but that involves going to the nether, which can be hard if you don't have, um, if, if you don't have an axe. Getting to the nether can be tricky. I'm not going to assume that everyone can do it. But I am going to assume that everyone can do this. Just hang out behind some blocks in such a way that you kill any enemies running at you. And honestly, make it so that them running at you is not a condition of their murder of you. I have no idea why this guy can't get up here, but you can make situations like this using slabs or anything. Uh, basically, controlling an engagement so that you can't get hurt is much easier if you're new to the game than making an engagement where you might get hurt, but you just really try not to. Really trying not to do something is a valid strategy, but I think I've got a better one here. So every single enemy that comes through, we're going to do this exact same thing. Bring them to a safe point and kill them there. It's a bit of a grind sometimes, but I think uh, one of the things you'll find about Minecraft is that it is a it is a game that involves some grinds for some things that are worthwhile. At some points, you are going to need to do that. Also, how did that guy even get out here? Did he climb out of the window earlier? <laughs> um, there are grinds in Minecraft sometimes, but those grinds are always worthwhile. And although your first grind to get the the axe to chop down some wood can feel like it's one of the worst ones. You'll look back at this moment fondly. You'll look back on your first chop of a wood and you'll realize what a valuable time you really had. And I think that's the important thing that a lot of us forget is that your, your first time doing anything can be your best. And so now I've got myself an ax. So they can come very damaged when you get your first ax, obviously. Um, but once you've got one, your problems are solved. However, there is a bit of a concern you might have, which is, well, what if I go to chop down my tree once I've gotten my axe? What if I do go to chop it down and then maybe, you know, like something attacks me and I lose the axe and I'm really far away from spawn? And that's why I would recommend always having a, uh, you know, always, always have like a plan B. How do you protect yourself? You can have a golden apple to protect yourself. You can have some decent gold armor. But I would also say everywhere you go to get an axe, oh, you can also find um, some pretty good stuff as, uh, alongside that. So I'm going to now... Um, take this as a valuable learning lesson. I'm going to jump in over here. And I'm going to eat. And I'm just going to run away. That can't hurt me if I don't let it. Um, so there we go. No more pain. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's always worth saying uh, that if you want to chop down wood, one of, the, one of the things that you should do is protect yourself. Because you can't help yourself... Uh, it, it, you can't help anyone. You can't do anything if you can't protect yourself. And so if protecting yourself is the most important thing, then let's take a look down here. Let's see what we've got. So if protecting yourself is the most important thing, then you might realize that, yeah, an offense is great. A good offense is a good defense. Some people would say that. Some people uh, would be saying that incorrectly. Uh, but also the thing you might not realize is you can not just chop down wood with an axe, but you can also chop down people. This is a little known fact and, you know, it's one of those uh, facts they would really rather you not know because you can use this to do some real damage. But the axe is not just a wood chopping device, it's a people chopping device. And so I'm going to eat my golden carrots, which I am very lucky to have. I'm going to continuously kill anyone who tries to come after me. There's so many of them. I, I didn't realize you could have this many spawning in one floor. And I'm going to show you that the most valuable item you can have if you want to chop down a tree is actually the one that comes from that that man who's doing those weird things to me right now. So, um, oh, there's some people over there. I'm going to just make sure they don't get over here. And also try to make sure that no one else can get up here. It's a way out, but not a way in. So while we heal up, I want to take a moment to say uh, thank you to the sponsor of today's video. This video was sponsored uh, by Minecraft. Mojang have uh, put me up to this tutorial today to try and get me to tell the world about uh, you know, how, how to do the beginning things in Minecraft. Let's be real, we were all novices once, and if you go to minecraft.net, that's minecraft.net, and use promo code, oh no, I forgot to migrate my account and now it's gone forever, then actually, uh, you'll find that you can save 0% off your next Minecraft purchase. It's actually negative 100%, because now you have to purchase the game again. But whoopsie, should have migrated the account during those years. Uh, you're bad, really, isn't it? Okay, uh, you, the ad read is over now. I'm going to eat another golden carrot. And then I'm going to show you uh, that using just a bit of confidence, uh, you two can be the proud owner of the ability to not die. Because here's the thing, fun thing, right? What's the opposite of death? Life. But how do you how do you get life in Minecraft? 
Well, that's a silly question because life... Also, are witches meant to spawn here or is it just too dark? Um, so what is the opposite of life? Where did the witch even go? Did the witch somehow despawn? Is the, is the creeper going to get hurt by that, by the way? I hope so. Um, but what is the opposite of life? The opposite of life is an exploding creeper, of course, which is very handy um, in lots of the, the fields of the world. But yeah, I'm now going to take full advantage of the fact that I have one of these people chopping devices. I'm going to make sure uh, that I use this next one to the full of my ability, because it's my last one remaining now. And so after I've healed up fully, which I will do from the safety of this little corner down here, it's going pretty poorly for me. I could do, I could do with a with a with a better food source, uh, and maybe maybe some healing, maybe maybe if I had, you know, right now I fear for my life. Right? Think about it. I I have this fear of dying, and so if you are ever at the point where you you want to chop down wood, but you've got a fear of dying, you might want to find something which can undie you. You know, like, which can remove that fear by making you undie. And so, I would always recommend, you know, it's, it, this is this is going a bit extra. I've got my I've got my ability to chop down the wood, but I'm not just going to leave you hanging. I'm not just going to give you a, a how to chop down wood and leave you there. I'm going to let you know that if you are going to chop down wood, uh, you should also keep in mind uh, very strongly and very firmly that if you're going to chop down wood, you should also, you know, make sure that your life is protected. And there are many ways to protect a life. Uh, also, this is this is going very weirdly for me right now. There are many ways to protect a life. That that is true. But one of the underappreciated parts of protecting your life is the fact that you'll need to eat sometimes rotten flesh. If you're not willing to eat another person's soul just to survive, I don't think you're cut out to make it in this world. Um, if you're not willing to eat a raw bit of cow that could be you know could be infected, I don't think you're cut out to make it either. But yeah, with that said. Let's now go find uh, the person himself. There he is. There's two of them. Okay, so the trick is we want to get them to attack each other, right? If they attack each other, uh, then they won't be able to attack me. That's probably true. Um, and if it was true, then it would help me out a lot. I think I, I think I hear them attacking each other. Yeah, I think. No, no, that's me. That's me. That's me who's dying right now. So if you ever find that there are two Ooga Booga men attacking you at one moment, uh, just keep in mind that they can only attack you if they get close. Oh, no, that's okay. It's it's over for me. I'm getting out of here right now. I'm getting right out of here. I'm getting... This is this is not a place I am hanging out. I'm eating the golden carrot. And I am not existing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Vexes are the worst thing they can do to you. I don't even... Oh, okay. So, what you're going to do at this point is you're going to admit that you are dead. And you're going to start the whole process again. So, if this ever happens to you... Uh, consider uh, that where your coordinates are is a valuable thing that you should save at all times. So if you ever find yourself in the situation where you're dead, just just realize uh, that it was probably all your fault. You probably did something wrong and you could learn from this in the future. If you if you blame the world, if you blame something in the world, it can help in the in the short term, but it won't help you learn in the real term. You know, to to use a you know a, a proverb here, if you teach a man uh, to fish, he'll have a fish. If you give a man a fish for every day for the rest of his life, then that man will be well fed forever. And in the same way, uh, I could teach you how to use an axe. I am, I am going to teach you how to use an axe. But what use is using an axe if you won't have wood for the rest of your life? Uh, and so today, let me show you where the wood for the rest of your life can actually come from. Because ultimately, in Minecraft, every tree can only be used a certain number of times. Ultimately... We are all beheld, beholden to this this limit. Beheld would be a similar past tense word that seems like it fits, but it doesn't. We would all be beholden to this exact same problem, and uh, so how do you how do you ever get past it? How do you break the cycle? Breaking a cycle is a hard thing. You've got a cycles exist for a reason. Uh, they you know they we we need we sometimes need a uh, you know like a way to get around that's. Slightly better than walking, but slightly slower than a, a, a vehicle of some other form. And so, break, breaking these uh, can be an emotional, uh, you know, behavior. Can be an emotional uh, thing to really dive into. But sometimes you've got to do it anyway. And the Minecraft version of that is sometimes you've got to know that if you die to something, that thing could kill you again. So you've got to be pre-prepared. Uh, you know, like not not just regular prepared. Be, be prepared, but like in advance. I wish there was like a word, like a, a, a proper way to describe that. Like being 
like pre-prepared, you know, like prepared, but like pre. But um, there is not. So instead, I'm just going to say that if you want to uh, ch chop down your wood for the first time, do it however you like. But if you want to chop down wood in a way that makes you uh, long-term successful, then make sure you, you find yourself something which can uh, defeat death that you'll find around you. And there's only one such tool that you'll find in a world, and it's called a bed. The bed allows you to set your spawn such that you won't even know that you died. This, um, I, by the way, I could really probably do with upping my render distance again. Now, I feel like I was at like 2700 on the X and I went to a mountain. So that's, I'm probably, I'm, it's probably right ahead of me. Logically speaking, that's where it is. Ah, wow, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm talking about. So how do you prevent death? Well, the first thing you've got to do is create death yourself. If you want to, if you ever find yourself wanting to, uh, you know, chop down a tree, if you ever find yourself wanting to, you know, stop something, consider becoming that thing internally. If you, if you understand something from the inside, you'll know how to break it much better than you ever can from the outside. From the outside in, you only ever get a specific view of the world. And that view can be great for judging. That view can be great for deciding that you don't like something. But is the view ever good enough uh, to become a master axeman? I would say no. I would say to become a master axeman, you're going to need skill. You're going to need determination. And you're going to need an axe because the, the axes only spawn in the woodland mansions. And so we got we to go there. But you, once you've got those things, you're good. So uh, if, if I, I think today I'm going to show you that just because you've only got two pieces of raw beef and three pieces of leather and you've got a lot of hunger that's been taken away, it doesn't mean you can't have the ability to not die in Minecraft. So let, let me show you this incredibly handy, it's, it's a very niche technique, but it's uh, it will help you out in your world. Have you ever found that there are too many mobs? Well, you can make them go away. You, you can do it. And you can do it using your brute force. You can do it using intimidation. But I have a technique I like better than any of those. First things first though, how do you get back to a willow mansion when it's on a hill? You climb the hill, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to climb the hill. So, I've, I've, okay. We, we, we've, we've worked out our plan to chop wood. It's, you, you get, we, we've got the axe. We've worked out the technique. We've got our, sh our shoulders squared. We've got all of these things. We just need to get it back. And then I'm going to give you the, the amazing advice that will change your world afterwards. So now that we... Okay, so this... this the, by the way, it's really, really fun to climb on top of trees. I have to say, if you've never done this in your world, if you always stay at the bottom of a roof forest, the bottom of a roof forest is more dangerous and just so much less fun. I, I always have a good time up here. And you know if I'm having a good time... You know, like, I, I'm, I'm immune to fun. I'm literally British. And so, you know, I'm having a good time. You know, it probably is a good fun, uh, a, a good time in general. So let's now break our way into the mansion again. And let's just accept that there are some scary people, but those scary people don't dictate my life decisions. You don't, you, you don't control me, friend. You don't get to do that. And so, assuming that he actually doesn't. Okay, so... That's great. We jumped over his things, which is which going to get him. Okay, so that's that's a Vex again. That is a Vex again. Uh, those are the one people who can control me. So there is, handily enough, a thing that you can do if you ever run into uh, something like this. And it's to run away. It's to say, yep, not worth it. Um, you are too much for me, my friend. Uh, and as long as you keep spinning around them, they'll never be able to hit you. It's a very valuable technique that can stall for time while you heal. And uh, eventually, they'll just go away off their own behest. Oh, and or you can hit them like that. Oh, that's handy to know, actually. So there we go. We just got to... Okay, so he's getting he's gone angry again. We do a little spin. This can work for a lot of mobs in Minecraft. As long as they don't um, have a... You know, they, they'll have a tendency to go to your last position. So you can spin around forever. And then you can get them. But you might lose your axe in the meantime. So what happens if that happens? Well, uh, I haven't... I hadn't considered this. Okay, so... Uh, if that happens to you, I think you got to restart the world. Uh, if your axe is gone, you can't chop down the wood. So, join me for part two, where we're going to work out what to do when you lose your axe before you chop down wood. Uh, otherwise, I hope you will enjoy it. No, I've got to... I, we're, we're in the right place, right time. We're going to get this done. Um, I'm going to get the creeper to do his best work on the... Okay. Gonna get the creepers to do his best work on the structure. 
That's going to be very useful for me. I'm going to eat all of this food that I have lying around. I'm going to hopefully then be able to go back in and with no issues whatsoever. Oh, there's another Vex. Oh, no. Okay, this is, this is game over. Okay. So the trick is, if you find yourself with Vexes, there is one easy way to make them turn off. Uh, and it's to go into the settings really quick before anyone notices you and go to peaceful difficulty and then you won't die. I don't think at least. least. Yeah, you, you can see it's just loading that I didn't die. It just made a mistake. There, there's no issue in there whatsoever. So, I have broken the game though. And from here, we can conclude that ultimately... Isn't it you who's in, in control of your own destiny? Isn't it you? <laughs> Have you ever seen this one before? It's, a, it's an issue of the loading screen. The loading screen is loading right now. And the game is just unaware of how to cope with that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this bed with me. Wait a minute. Did you see how I got the bed? Even though it's made of wood? Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. I. Do you see that, internet? I got- the bed was made of wood, but I got it without an axe. So, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking, I'm gonna try something crazy. If I do all of my preparations as if I had an axe... Okay, square shoulders. St stance wide. I'm far away, I'm not too close. If I do all of these preparations, I might just be able to... Oh, 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 I chopped down a wood. That, I obviously, this whole thing was there to teach you that that's how you chop down wood. The crucial missing ingredient was that we were trying to chop it down from a tree where you need an axe, whereas to take it from a village, you just need your fist. So if you need to chop down wood, come to one of these places and you can do precisely that. Oh, and, you, and once you chop down one wood, you can chop down all the wood. You can use the wood and you can make yourself an axe. I mean, not yet, but you, we could, you, you could do it. So with that said, I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope that you've enjoyed this video because I, I, I hope it's, it's the best tutorial I've ever made. I think if you ever, if you need a tutorial to help anyone who's getting into Minecraft, this should be the useful first step they can use because now that they've got wood, they can work on my second tutorial, uh, which will be coming soon, which is how to craft planks. I'll let you know uh, how to do that one in the next upcoming video in this series because knowing how to Minecraft is a very valuable and important thing and hopefully you've learned a lot about it today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one, by the way.